Hey, and welcome to another Chicago Beer Pass beer review. And we are drinking some Thai iced tea inspired Orin. We got regular Orin here, but <laughs> you know what? Screw the regular. No, uh, no fancy, uh, no fancy two pack holders that look like uh, pre roll cigarettes for, uh, for this one. Oh no, that's just the benthic. That's just the benthic. This All is right. just gla- they got the little sticker on it, which I went with the glass that is that the regular Orin, or that might be the variant that I didn't get. Mm-hmm. But I got the glass where to go with the Orin. Nick's got the Afro beer chick glass. Yeah, man, shout out to Afro beer chick. So I had already drank one of these cans. I drank it on Thanksgiving with the family. Right on. So haven't dived into regular yet. So Orin is a strong ale in bourbon barrels. That's the OG. Right. And so this is a bourbon barrel strong ale with cinnamon and black tea. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I fr- I'm blanking on what the other variant was. I should have just got the two variants and said, screw OG. What are you even doing? Yeah. Mistakes. Know. Mistakes were made. <laughs> I was thinking I would try them like side by side, but then I'm more interested in this cinnamon black tea one. Yeah. So the problem with doing like these variant videos is if you didn't get this beer when you got it, you're kind of screwed. Yeah, unless you go to like Great Taste in the Midwest or something. Right, and yeah. they may have it on or maybe at the tap room or something like that. But so So sorry if you're come across this and you're pissed that this doesn't exist anymore because yeah it's probably this year's only maybe yeah, secondary though yeah secondary and then you know trades mm-hmm. yeah. uh what this comes in at 14 percent, right yeah man yeah it's a big ass beer what's been thick 14 as well same 14 too yeah so they're putting a imperial stout it's as much as a strong ale yeah. it's kind of like saying your porter is as big as your stout, right? It's very much just like saying that. Yeah. I think, uh, so the only difference at that point is like the malt you're using. Mm-hmm. So it's going to change the viscosity, you know, that thickness, that mouthfeel. That's probably going to change. But yeah, not too much. Not too much difference. Not as far as alcohol and as far as alcohol. ass kicking yeah. standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the bourbon is real mm-hmm. strong. It's the first time using this glass. This is nice. I like the. Mm. All right, let's dive in. Spice get... tea and booze and cinnamon, everything. Yeah, all I at don't once. really get the tea, but no? tea's like a hard flavor to, for me to like pull out of things. Yeah, um, chai tea latte a little bit, which really doesn't smell too much different from like, um, your Starbucks when you add all the spices on the spice rack. Well, yeah. Thai iced tea is kind of shy. I, like, mm. it's very similar with the condensed milk. But man, that cinnamon, when you taste it, hits you right away. Yeah. Left Nick speechless. It's very pleasant, man. I didn't know what to expect because I'm like, I'm not really a, a black tea kind of guy. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, oh, but dude, like, it, the, 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 the spiced tea and the cinnamon kind of behave the way like a like an herbal hop would right right and it just makes it fun yeah uh i think the tea where the bourbon is very much in the aroma the tea helps like balance out that like burn that you might get from the the bourbon taste and just makes it this kind of the bitter taste that you might get from a coffee is sort of like you're getting with the tea and it balances out that bourbon yeah Mm. It's kind of rem- reminiscent of like it's just a very creative, well done cocktail, you know. That's true. Yeah, I could yeah. see it more like a yeah a beer cocktail. Like you could throw, if you had what's that cinnamon booze that people fire, Fireball. Oh man! So you haven't heard that in a while. Yeah. Replace that with the cinnamon. I remember that. To so you could make your own with the regular, Fireball, and a little mm. like a little tea. There you go. I just gave me back pains thinking about this fucking concoction. That's like a um, Christmas drink right there. That could yeah. be a good holiday. This is a good this is a good holiday beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the kind of spice you want. Not the whole not the whole spice rack, you know? N- nothing crazy. But definitely a, a fun spin on a beer that in the past where we've had Orin, 
Orn was primarily like just big barrel character. Right. And then, you know, the malts are a little lighter than the stouts, so that comes at you first. It's reminiscent of a barrel aged barley wine a little bit. But when you throw these spices on it, it's a game changer, man. It's a very it's very pleasant. Yeah. I think you're right about a good holiday beer because it does feel like you could be sitting around with your family and just eating pie or cookies like at the uh, at night when the desserts get put out. You're just like, oh, I'm going to have this. And it's not so sweet. It's not like that goose cherry beer. Oh, uh, the mushery? Yeah, it's not yeah. that. It. It's like a coffee, but you're still drinking. Yeah. This is like if you had like a sherry wine or a cognac and you had like mm-hmm. a couple, two, three cookies to end the night, you know? Yeah. This kind of reminds you of those things together somehow. Man, that works for me, man. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, man, you're going to open this thing. It's going to be way too much. But it's so easy. Yeah, it's just 14%. And we talked about, uh, what were we talking about? Like a bounce point hiding the booze. Yeah. Uh, on the last episode of the podcast, this hides that 14%. Like, yeah. we're just going to finish up here and just be trashed. So we probably won't get in the Orin. Maybe we'll save this for next week's episode. Yeah. Just drink some Orin. For sure. Yeah. There's a nice uh, nice dark chocolate vibes on the nose. And then you 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 expect it to be a barrel-aged beverage, but nothing overwhelming. Yeah. And then when you taste it, it's actually, like, a little smoother than what it smells like. Half Acre, um, I think they're they make pretty good beer. <laughs> and I'm guessing some of the tea balances that out too, right? Like, you know, because like you got tea, you got well, tea, dark tea is gonna help with any al- any al- the phenolics of alcohol that are usually left behind on a 14 percenter. Right, I think that the bitterness you might get, like it's similar to coffee. Uh, I yeah. I'm not sure, like, what the tea adds versus the coffee. Like, you're getting a different flavor, but you get that bitter kind of, it probably, like, pulls all that, or pulls back the alcohol a little bit. Yeah. Hides it, maybe. Yeah. So it's there. It's, for me, it's there in the nose. But oddly enough, it's tucked away. It's tucked away underneath all these other flavors, the booze is. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, and, man, it's a little, a little scary. Yeah. Uh, I think cinnamon does a good job. Of hiding that booze too, because like eggnog doesn't eggnog have cinnamon? Like yeah. when you make, so it just helps like that little bit of like burn from the cinnamon is stronger than your burn from the alcohol. Mm-hmm. So you think that you're getting more cinnamon, but you're really just getting it alcohol. Yeah, and it gets you drunk very fast. <laughs> That's nice, man. Oh, yeah, so I think each two pack was going for I want to say fifteen bucks. So yeah, um, or no, no, I think it was nineteen. Each each can is ten dollar, basically a ten dollar can. Okay. Which uh, yeah, beer's getting expensive. A little bit. A little bit. But that's why you got to share it with friends, with family, especially when they're two packs. Those are just like meant to be shared. Yeah. That's a good call, man. I'm glad you picked that up. It, this wasn't on my radar at all. Yeah. Well, because I was I was kind of bummed out that um, it was in cans this year. Because last year, Orin, well, Orin's got that really nice maroon uh, tones in the in the label, and then the bottle was uh, waxed with that same dark. Maroon oh, color. that's right. I think you did. You bring a bottle and we drank it. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was kind of bummed out that it was in cans. But then last year, the, they didn't package any variants of Warren, not in bottles. Okay. It was only like tap room just, only? I mean, yeah. Like, I've never even had a, a, a variant of Warren I, before now. I've only had the OG Warren. Yeah. I think so. Half Acre is doing an insane amount of beer that I don't think people are, like, that wise to what they're doing and how much they're doing. Like, yeah. it's like yeah. you check Instagram or Twitter, and it's just like... Hey, Friday, we got all these beers coming out. Dude, like over 52 weeks. They're putting in that work. Right. Over 52 weeks. It's impressive to see. And we haven't even scratched the surface on like the Wild Cove series Mm -hmm. or, you know, what I like to call their breakfast beer series where it's just all these really fun, you know, they'll throw like a a Hefeweizen or they'll throw like a straight up like a Pilsner in a a neutral wine cask Mm -hmm. with a ton of fruit, you know, and just let it. And some and some wild yeast. 
Yeah. And and they're doing enough of it that you don't have to show up at 11 a.m. when they open. You can show up after work, and it's still there. And yeah. you can show up the next day, and they're probably still there. Yeah. Like, you don't have to, like, it's, like, the perfect amount right now where it's, like, I got to try something unique, and I didn't have to wait in line or didn't have to stress about getting that. Yeah, and um, that Lincoln, that Lincoln location, they're all super jazzed to like explain each beer to you and then let you try as many as you want. They mm-hmm. usually have a bunch of bottles because you know all this stuff's such a short run. You know, you see a beer, you you have a hard time pronouncing it, you know, because it's a, you know you have a hard time. They've never seen it before, and yeah. they're just like, listen, man, I'll slow down and I'll I'll ride, I'll ride with you on this and let you know what's going on here. Yeah, so I mean, this is the official unofficial Cat Picker podcast. I guess so. They should just buy us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work for beer and uh, woodworking. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and T-shirts. And T-shirts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, cheers. Cheers.